Welcome back to the Warbird Mistress. Today is Tuesday, the 10th of March, 1942, and this is A Walk Through the War. I want to begin by thanking all of my Patreon patrons, uh, YouTube subscribers, everybody that likes and shares the videos, especially those of you who share the videos. I noticed that the last month saw an uptick of over a thousand subscribers. Uh, there is, I mean, I got monetized. There's a ton of you know, nice things that are coming. So, I, in fact, I think I made uh, about $90, which is hilarious because they pay you if you reach 100 So I'm $10 short of actually getting a check from YouTube, which is something I never, ever thought I could say. So, um, besides that, you know, a couple of new Patreon patrons, and there are a few donors. Uh, really, it does help tremendously with with getting the content out there, with you know paying for the cost of the website subscriptions and uh, books of course books 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 and books um it's just uh, i'm very grateful and i just wanted to start start out by saying that uh but the most important thing is of course you know sharing the videos um the war walk through the war i get about uh 80 to 120 views on average at first the longer videos have uh i have to really work on those i know because it's gone from having thousands of views to just a couple dozen a day if that but just know that I am working on getting them out as much as I can it's you know 40 plus hours a week at work plus this plus uh you know I don't have a personal life so at least I don't have to say that so it's just it's it's a lot so I'm very grateful that it's appreciated and that you show your appreciation uh, both by comments shares and likes but even also by giving of yourself so Moving on. Per Tuesday, the 10th of March, 1942, we begin with the 5th Air Force in the Southwest Pacific Area, where the headquarters of the 3rd Bombardment Group Light and the A-20s of the 13th Bombardment Squadron Light continue their trek in preparation for entering the fray in a few short weeks as they move from Brisbane to Charters Towers. Arriving in Brisbane are the A-24 air echelons of the following 27th Bombardment Group Light units the 16th and 17th from Bachelor Field, and the 91st from Malang, Java. Moving to the 11th of March, 1942, nothing happened. To make a quote from one of my favorite series, Remember When, nothing happened, and that is indeed news. However, there is a reason for this. A quick review of Indian newspapers shows that the weather that week was not only unpredictable, but that it reached record highs, and to say that about the subcontinent and neighboring Burma is quite a feat. So I think that, you know, I went back and looked at a lot of that, and I think that that's why there is slower activity. And it's always interesting to go back and look at the contemporary sources to see what the weather was like, see what commercial activity might have been hindered that also might have affected transportation. And uh, just one of those things that, you know, as an aside, I just wanted to mention is one of the things I think is overlooked so much in our, you know, how we teach and how we understand military history is now with newspapers archived and available for free online, there's a wealth of information out there that really makes synchronizing our knowledge and, you know, finding out why things were the way they were so much easier. But let's leave 2021 and go back to Thursday, the 12th of March, where things are a little livelier. Still in the China Burma India Theater of Operations with the 10th Air Force, arriving at Karachi, India, are the headquarters of the 7th Bombardment Group Heavy and the 88th Reconnaissance Squadron Heavy from Australia. Uh, the air echelon of the 88th is still at Tonesville with B-17s. Their last mission in Australia will be on 14 March. Also arriving are the 16th and 25th Pursuit Squadrons Interceptor of the 51st Pursuit Group Interceptor with P-40s. Their first mission will be in July. Now where the Republic of China and the Army Air Forces intersect, we see 10 P-40Es arrive in Karachi, India by ship from Australia. Many of these are diverted from Java. Most all of these will go to the AVG, although not all are accounted for in the Flying Tiger's inventory. So in Burma, where wearing your feet appears to be strictly prohibited, and as a bit of a side note, since I'm speaking more about the Americans who happen to be fighting for Chiang Kai-shek in the Flying Tigers and not really in the U.S. Army Air Forces proper, 
the Japanese are changing their tactics as they strike against Magwe. While Boynton's ability to harvest from the jungle several P-40s which had crashed and return them to Kunming, the American volunteer group's infantry there and at Magwe has been reduced through Japanese bombing raids, dogfights, and forced landings. As much as historians talk about the P-40 pilots learning to fight the Japanese, here the Japanese have learned to fight the P-40s. Rather than sending mixed groups of Anns, Nels, Nates, or Oscars all at once as in an attempt to achieve overwhelming superiority, they are avoiding being struck down by the zooming warhawks of Chenault's pilots and their brothers in Hawker Hurricanes by first sending high-altitude recon sorties to loiter over Magwe. Without radar or acoustic detection equipment, Magwe's at a disadvantage, and the Japanese know when the AVG and the RAF are on the ground, and when they can best be struck by the waiting Japanese Army Air Forces. In answer to this, Chenault begins sending two and three plane strikes against Japanese bases, some of which, like Mingdalon, are familiar to the Allies who controlled them until the last few days. Pilots coming from Kunming are in short supply, however, as it takes them weeks to reach Kunming from the jungle where their transport had crashed. Without pilots at Kunming, transfers of men and equipment between there and Magwe to meet the crushing Japanese advances towards both bases become that much more difficult that they are responsible for the majority of victories despite this 14 to 1 disadvantage in fighter strength, as well as a shortage of men, materiel, morale. It will one day be described in glowing terms by Air Vice Marshal D.F. Stevenson when he recalls the Burma campaign and the respect earned by the AVG, by their Commonwealth and Empire colleagues and the troops on the ground facing the Japanese and Thai onslaught. In raw statistics, during the 10 weeks that the AVG had been at Rangoon prior to moving to Magwe, they numbered between 5 and 20 serviceable P-40s at any one time. In 31 encounters over Thailand and Burma, the AVG claimed 217 enemy planes and 43 probables for the loss of 4 pilots killed in air combat and 16 P-40s destroyed, either on the air or on the ground. In the same 10 weeks, the RAF units flying with them destroyed 74 Japanese aircraft with another 33 probables for the loss of 22 buffaloes and hurricanes. Many were piloted by experienced pilots who had seen combat before entering the Asian theater. In summation, the AVG had about a 13.5 to 1 kill-to-loss ratio, compared to the Commonwealth's ratio of about 3.3 to 1, neither counting probables. And now that they are at Magwe, they are still under pressure, especially now that the Japanese are adapting to meet the Flying Tigers at their own game, but Chenault still pulls through to become one of the most successful leaders in the area, and for right now, the only hope for the men on the ground evacuating British Burma. And that brings us to Friday, the 13th of March, 1942, where we're still in the CBI with the 10th Air Force. We're adding to the recent arrivals at Karachi are the P-40s of the 26th Pursuit Squadron Interceptor, 51st Pursuit Group Interceptor, they won't be operational for another seven months as they await the infrastructure, men, machines, and mission capability needed to put their birds to work. To the southeast in the 5th Air Force's Southwest Pacific Area, the 36th Pursuit Squadron Interceptor, 8th Pursuit Group Interceptor, transfers from Brisbane to Lowood, Australia, with Bell P-39 Air Cobras. And last but not least, across the Pacific and out to the Atlantic Coast in the American Theater of Operations, Zone of the Interiors, 3rd Air Force, the headquarters of 12 Bomber Command is activated at McDill Field in Tampa, Florida. And I'm playing catch-up again, but that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, because you won't want to miss another episode as we go through this walk through the war. Until then, this is Claire, and I am the Warbird Mistress. Take care.